This is Valley View News. California's gasoline prices have reached record highs, jumping 50 cents a gallon in just a few days. California voters are hearing from both sides on the sales and income tax initiative. More than nine miles of L.A. streets have been closed, so thousands of cyclists can pedal in for the fifth Ciclavia event. Welcome to Valley View News. I'm Lauren Ori. And I'm Rigo Villalobos. California gas prices have jumped to their highest levels ever and did it in one week. Valley News reporter Dennis Aru has more on the story. Dennis? Gas prices rose so quickly it caught many drivers by surprise and left a dent in their wallets. Welcome to California, where just as temperatures drop, gas prices rise dramatically. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm kind of shocked <laughs> how much they, how high they were. Motorists lined up looking to pump the cheapest gas as prices increased to near record highs. Wholesale gas stations like Costco closed as fuel ran out as a result of distributors tightening their supply. They later reopened with many customers flocking to the discounted gas. California requires a special blend of fuel to meet the state's strict environmental laws, so getting supplies from elsewhere is not easy. Some people turn to public transportation during this time, but for others, it was just not an option. It's one of those things, uh, if I got to do it, I got to do it. I tried to do uh, all my errands at one time and, and, and route them out. And yet others who drive remain unaffected. Uh, it hasn't been hitting my wallet because I have a company car and a company gas card. I'm not paying for my own gas right now, but possibly next year when I start getting a job. Just because my freshman year, my dad doesn't want me to get a job quite yet. Experts believe relief may be in sight as one of the refineries had closed reopened. You might see a lot more people walking, and others will be cutting back on their driving. No uh, snowboarding trips this winter. But hey, at least the air and water are only a quarter. Now Governor Jerry Brown has taken the emergency <coughs> steps of allowing the immediate sale and import of the cheaper winter-grade gas. All this in hopes of lowering those prices. Back to you. Record high gas prices are causing thieves to steal fuel and try to cash in. Car and truck rental companies in the Antelope Valley were struck by gas thieves last month. Last week, a Shell station had hundreds of gallons of gas stolen overnight. President Obama has visited Los Angeles for a quick series of fundraisers. The events are expected to raise $10 million for his campaign. Obama arrived in Los Angeles last Sunday afternoon. He made his first stop at a reception in Beverly Hills for a longtime campaign donors. After that, Obama made his way to a star-studded celebrity fundraising concert in downtown Los Angeles. The president then took off from LAX to Keene, California for the dedication of the Cesar Chavez National Monument. From there, Obama planned to attend a fundraiser in San Francisco before flying to Ohio. The national unemployment rate has dropped to 7.8 percent. The Associated Press says the numbers are the lowest the country has seen in almost four years. This could potentially give President Barack Obama a lift on Election Day. He spoke to a Virginia crowd about the unemployment rate. He says there is more work to be done and that is why he's running for re-election. But Mitt Romney disagrees and says the country has not improved enough. More than 8 million people have lost their jobs during the recession. Just under half of those jobs have been added back. That means there are millions of unemployed Americans. Could Proposition 30 save California college students money by increasing taxes on the rich? Or does the prop do nothing to fix California's underlying budget problems? Valley News reporter Jonathan Gonzalez tells us about the opposing views on Prop 30. Alyssa Day is a senior hospitality major at Cal Poly Pomona, and she says... It's crazy. How much your tuition has gone up in the last four years. My school, I pay for all by myself, and so that includes tuition, books. Here we need knife sets, we need chef coats, we need all of these different added on top of it, along with rent groceries, car, car insurance, all of it comes from me. Day is one of more than 400,000 Cal State College students who will be hit with yet another tuition increase if State Initiative Proposition 30 fails to pass in the general election this November. Prop 30 would raise taxes on individuals making over $250,000 or families making over $500,000. The sales tax would also increase by a quarter of a penny. The result? $6.6 .6 billion over the next seven years added to the state's general fund, which would in turn feed programs like higher education. 
CSUN students will be negatively affected if the proposition fails, according to faculty union president Nate Thomas. It's very clear that if 30 does not pass, that there will be an immediate $250 million cut to the CSU. So, simple. You're probably going to lose classes. You're probably going to lose faculty. You're probably going to lose staff. But while passing Prop 30 may seem like a no-brainer, opponents say the initiative fails to fix a bigger problem. Like CSUN marketing major Michael Rodriguez. Uh, I don't think they should because I feel like we're wasting so much money already and we just keep throwing money at the problem. It's like I feel like we're junkies and we just keep giving them, giving them, giving them and they're just going to keep taking and taking. They're not going to stop. We have to you know, stop the funds to useless spending and kind of restructure. Lisa Snell is a spokeswoman for the libertarian think tank The Reason Foundation and she agrees. The state of California spends too much money and they haven't made real attempts to cut funding in things like pensions. We just made a huge investment in high-speed rail. The spending cuts are disingenuous at best. Back at Cal Poly Pomona, Day says the upper class understands the importance of education. Paying a little bit more in taxes, more than likely those people have come from an educated background. So it's right to help other people that might not be in the same situation. I'm Jonathan Gonzalez, Valley View News. Vice President Joe Biden and Republican candidate Paul Ryan are getting ready for their debate. Biden has been reading a book co-written by Ryan and practicing lines that attack the Republican platform. Ryan will look to continue the momentum generated by Mitt Romney's successful first presidential debate. Democrats are looking for a big night from Biden after what many called a poor performance by President Obama in the first debate. The number of people killed in a fungal meningitis outbreak is going up. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says that seven people have died from the illness. There have been 64 cases in nine states. This outbreak has been linked to steroid injections. The steroids were manufactured by a specialty pharmacy in Massachusetts. The pharmacy has since shut down operations and stopped distributing its products. The head of the U.S. Border Patrol Agents Union says the agent killed last week in a shooting opened fire on two fellow agents. Two groups of agents came across each other in an area of heavy brush after a sensor was activated. Agent Nicholas Ivey then opened fire, injuring one of the other agents, but then was killed in return. The wounded agent has since been released from the hospital. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has won re-election by convincing margin. Chavez won 54 percent of the vote and will remain in office until 2019. Voter turnout was estimated to be as high as 80 percent. Challenger Enrique Capriles has criticized Chavez for a rise in violent crime. He also faulted Chavez for giving billions of dollars worth of oil to Cuba each year. Chavez has been in office for 13 years and he has a strong support from the poor because of his socialist policies. The European Union has set aside nearly $300 million to help Jordan's ailing economy. Protesters have been demanding more democratic freedoms in Jordan, where the king controls many of the political decisions. The European Union hopes the financial aid will help bring about political, economic and social reforms in Jordan. The SpaceX Dragon spacecraft has launched for an 18-day mission at the International Space Station. SpaceX billionaire CEO Elon Musk says they still have much work to do, but that the launch was a success. The drag will be attached to the station for more than two weeks before returning to Earth. The MLB playoffs are off to an exciting start, and researchers say they've found more benefits of coffee. We don't win unless we work together. It's how we play our best. It's how we survive on the field. Now that same teamwork can save 13 million people affected by the famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Go to this site and forward the facts to everyone you know. The more people who know, the more money we can raise. And the more money we raise, the more people we can help. Because saving lives doesn't take a lot. It just takes a lot of us. Criticism over sugary drinks has intensified, and the beverage industry is rolling out new vending machines. The machines will let customers see the calorie count for drinks before they make their purchase. The vending machines will launch in Chicago and San Antonio municipal buildings in 2013 before going nationwide. The American Beverage Association says the machines will increase the availability of lower calorie drinks. The machines will remind consumers to consider their options with messages such as try a low calorie beverage. They will also add calorie labels to the selections buttons on beverage vending machines to show calorie counts per container. 
As always, we have a lot happening in sports. And Valley News reporter Emily Davis is here for your weekly update. Emily, I heard there was a 25-car pileup at Talladega. That's right, Rigo. It was a huge mess on the final lap of the Talladega Speedway. You could see defending NASCAR champ Tony Stewart going in for a block to protect the lead, but that didn't quite work out. The late maneuver sends him flipping and flying over traffic, everyone bracing for impact, just a mass of smoke and burning rubber. No one was seriously hurt, but then Daytona 500 winner Matt Kenseth is able to avoid the big one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. says he's concerned about this aggressive style of racing and racers are wondering if NASCAR is going to do anything about it. Then we have an ever-narrowing MLB wildcard race knocking out yet another team. The Orioles give the at-home Rangers a beating, only allowing them one run in the first. Here it is, top of the seventh, Nate McLeod hits a line drive down the left, getting Robert and Dino for the score. Top of the ninth, Manny Mikado, another hit left. Then McLeod brings home another run from Andino. Finally, bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded. David Murphy slams a fly out left, but our all-star McLeod is there to close it out. Baltimore will take on the Yankees for the next wild card battle. Now in Oakland and Detroit, boy, what a great game for the fans. The A's are the first to lead the top of the third. Yohannes Cespedes knocks it to right field. Coco Chris is called to the second, and Cliff Pennington an arm stretch just in time to bring it home. Tigers try to catch up. Bottom of the seventh, Miguel Cabrera hits what looks like is going to be a sinker. To center, gets fumbled around by Chris. Sending in two runs, Detroit fans are very happy. The A's bring a neck-and-neck neck score, but then take back the lead in the eighth with a homer from Josh Reddick. But it gets better, a wild pitch from Ryan Cook. It bounces away and allows Don Kelly to steal the tie. And Detroit keeps the lead from there. Kelly swings. A sacrifice ride right bring the game to 5-4 as Omar Infante brings in the final run. And the other Bay Area team is not doing so hot right now either. San Francisco is taking on Cincinnati at home. First pitch to Ryan Ludwig at the top of the second sends fly to center field and it's gone. Then Bronson Arroyo shuts down the third inning with a straight strike outs and finishes with Madison Bumgarner. Then top of the fourth, it was just one after another. First, Scott Rowland sends one, then Angel Pegging sends two more. The Giants finally get their first man on base by the fifth, but it doesn't go anywhere. Reds gave them no chance snatching the victory 9-0. The two will continue battling it out for the next spot in the wild card this week. The St. Louis Cardinals hosted the Washington Nationals in game one of the NLDS. We go to the bottom of the second with a score tied at one. John Jay comes through with a bases loaded sack fly. Cardinals up to one. Top of the eighth now. Tyler Moore comes up to bloops one to shallow right field, scoring two runs. Nats up three to two. To the ninth now. Nats closer Drew Storen gets Matt Holiday on a check swing. The Nats hold on for the three to two victory and take game one. The NFL saw a couple of injuries this week, and let's start with Matt Castle of the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City. A good Castle. throw to Jamal Charles, but Castle gets hit Jackson hard by the Ravens' Hanoli Nada. Castle not looking good, but what makes it worse is the fans cheering on the injury. Team members spoke out against these angry fans who have been frustrated with Castle the past couple of years. The Chiefs tackle Eric Wilson says that it's not right fans are celebrating the injury. Castle left the game with a concussion and the Chiefs lost 9-6. The next injury comes from the Washington Redskins. Robert Griffin III looking for a player, but nobody's open. He makes a run for it and gets slammed. He gets knocked out of the game, and the Atlanta Falcons take the win. Griffin suffered a concussion, but teammates say he appears well, but the Redskins won't know for sure if he'll be back for their next game against Minnesota. New Orleans Saints had a needed first win of the season against San Diego. QB Drew Brees also got to celebrate passing Johnny Unitas' half-century-old record by throwing a touchdown pass for his 48th straight game. The Saints walk away victors at a 31-24 final. And CSUN may not have a football team, but we do have soccer, and it was a big weekend for both the men's and women's teams. Let's start with a break from history for the men's team. CSUN clinched a victory against Big West Conference rival and number four team in the nation, UC Santa Barbara. 
This is the Matters' first win against the Gauchos in Santa Barbara in 13 years. It was a close game with Beto Velasquez scoring the only goal. That's his sixth goal of the season and second game winner of the year. Then we have the women's team who also took charge of their game against UC Riverside. Melissa Fernandez, Kendall Moscal, and Chloe McDaniel each hit the net for CSUN in the first half. The Highlanders were only able to score once in the second half as the Matadors kept the defense tight, winning it 3-1. to one. It was a great weekend for CSUN Sports. Now back to you. A cup of coffee could be doing a lot more than helping Americans start their day. Maribel Serrano has more on the story. It's the drink that wakes many people up in the morning with its sweet aroma and bittersweet taste. But apart from that, research shows coffee offers many health advantages. The latest study shows that coffee helps relieve neck and back pain. Previous studies have shown that coffee beans have properties that help reduce the risk of liver cancer, stroke, and depression. Past studies have shown many health benefits that come from drinking coffee, but there's no need to overdrink your morning beverage. Experts say that drinking one to two cups a day is more than enough. Coffee has also been found to help with weight loss and boost muscle growth. But there are other reasons people love the caffeinated beverage. I love the taste. I love the boost of energy it gives me and the smell, like the aroma. I just think it tastes good. But it does, I, the caffeine is helpful like if you need to study and stay up late and stuff. So that's why I drink it. There is even a National Coffee Day. Every year, coffee shops and convenience stores celebrate by giving away free coffee or offering specials. But not everyone is a fan of the drink. I don't like coffee. Um, I think it stains your teeth and it makes my stomach hurt. However, I do like coffee ice cream. I'm not a big coffee fan. I think it tastes very bitter. But I guess if maybe I put like a lot of sugar in there, I kind of like it. But I'm more of a tea person. Yeah, same. I'm, I have tea right now. Yet, with so many benefits being found, it's no wonder coffee seems to have become a permanent trend. From Burbank, Maribel Serrano, Valley View News. A CSUN professor has two distinctly different careers, and he's successful in both of them. Valley View News reporter Rigo Villalobos has a story. The professor teaches psychology here at CSUN, but several years ago he turned his hobby of singing into a paying job, and now he splits his time between the classroom and the recording studio. Meet Dr. Herman Rodriguez. He's a professor at California State University in Northridge where he teaches psychology. He has been recognized as one of the most respected and renowned Latino mental health professionals in the Los Angeles area. As a psychologist, he has worked for over 25 years. He received his first degree in psychology at the same institution where he now teaches. Where I took the classes now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm teaching in the same rooms and, and so it's very interesting and, and uh, you know, uh, deja vu, uh, I was sitting there. <laughs> yeah. But working as a professor in this university and guiding his patients as a family therapist are not the only jobs Dr. Rodriguez has. He's also a singer. He's known as El Romantico de Zacatecas, the romantic man of the state of Zacatecas. My dream was always to be a musician, always. And whether uh, I stopped for a while, but it was, uh, it's almost like I knew that I will end up being a musician. And he was right. He's now part of the music industry with four albums under his belt. I'm one of those uh, musicians that love to sing a little bit about everything, but mostly focus on the romantic type because that's what I like to write about. And we just heard it. Another one of his profession is to write songs. But the question is, how does a psychologist slash professor slash singer slash composer concentrate in writing songs after hearing so many problems from his patients? So many problems of the world. Well, uh, actually, um, writing music is uh, uh, like escape for me. Uh, I, I don't have to um, stay uh, focused in what the people are saying so that I can, uh, you know, give them uh, uh, perhaps uh, an option to solve their problems. He says sometimes goals are difficult to accomplish in life, but that with effort and commitment, anything is possible. My recommendation is that don't give up on your dreams because do, dreams do come true. Since Rodriguez started his career in the music industry, he has written and produced about 80% of his material. Back to you. 100,000 people peddled their way into downtown Los Angeles last weekend, and 2011's World's Sexiest Man is now one of 2012's Best Actors. 
coming up after the break on Valley View News. Do you like this top? It's so gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. <laughs> say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that so girl wearing a skirt as a top? Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times five days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of letters. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. The home of Cesar Chavez is now a national monument. President Obama designated the labor leader's former California residence a landmark. The 187-acre site known as Nuestra Señora de la Paz will be the nation's first monument honoring a contemporary Mexican-American. Many view the designation as a move by Obama to shore up Latino support just weeks before the election. Chavez was the leader of the United Farm Workers and fought for better pay and working conditions for laborers. Halloween and Thanksgiving are not even here yet, but that hasn't stopped retailers from getting ready for the holidays. Valley News reporter Lauren Ari has the story. Santa Claus has come to town much earlier this year, prompting mixed reactions from shoppers. I kind of like to enjoy one season at a time. It's a little too early, I think. I think it's a good idea because people are running out of money real quick. Christmas decorations are already hitting store shelves as retailers aim to get shoppers into the holiday spirit. Stores will spend the next three months vying for shoppers' attention in dollars, kicking off promotions and sales while it's still hot outside. Retail experts say companies are racing to lure holiday shoppers much earlier this year to lock in consumer loyalty. We've already started to give out coupons uh, to the customers uh, that start October 20th, that go on to like November and December. So that makes people come back, get ready for the holidays, um, to just make them want to come here versus other places. Holiday sales are predicted to rise 3% this year compared to last year. Retailers are expected to do well this season, combining both in-store business with the best of their online deals. A new survey has found more than half of Americans are expected to do their holiday shopping online. And with more and more people using smart devices today, companies are now targeting consumers more than ever online. Every year, more people turn to online shopping to fulfill their gift shopping needs. Online shoppers will spend nearly $55 billion this holiday season just in the United States alone. So how are SoCal residents planning to do their holiday shopping? I don't start my Christmas shopping. Mean, I don't go shop for anyone. <laughs> Definitely online. Online, online yeah. Because <laughs> everyone likes receiving mail. and It's like presents. You're opening it like, I got presents and not really much. <laughs> In Hollywood, Lauren Ari, Valley View News. Here's the scoop. Liam Neeson and his latest action thriller have a big weekend at the box office. And Bradley Cooper gets a prestigious acting award. Devin Knight will tell us about it in his entertainment report. Hey, Devin. Hey, Lauren. Thank you. Uh, actress Daryl Hannah of the 1980s hit Splash has been arrested in northern Texas for protesting. She was taken into custody along with an elderly woman who was with her. They were arrested for criminal trespassing about 100 miles outside Dallas. Hannah and 78-year-old Eleanor Fairchild were standing in front of heavy equipment in an attempt to stop the building of an oil pipeline. They argue the $7 billion project is unsafe and could contaminate the environment. The Keystone XL pipeline is designed to bring crude oil from Canada to the Gulf Coast. The company says this would be the safest pipeline ever built. Hannah has a long uh, reputation of uh, opposing this company and was arrested last year for protesting against another pipeline in Washington state. The 2011 Sexiest Man Alive is now winner of an actor award in the Hollywood Film Awards. Bradley Cooper starred in such hits as The Hangover and The Hangover 2, and he won the Hollywood Actor Award this year. He was awarded the honor for his portrayal of the former teacher leaving a mental institution. Cooper plays with Robert De Niro in Silver Linings Playbook, which is set to open this November. 
The awards will be officially handed out later this month at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Now, Liam Neeson's new movie, Taken 2, took the box office this weekend, raking in more than $50 million in its debut. The movie was the biggest reason for the overall box office sales that were up more than 40% from this time last year. The Fox action sequel panned by critics but was loved by audiences who made it the best October PG-13 rated opening ever. Now, the animated movie Hotel Transylvania fell to second place this weekend and took in more than $27 million. The sci-fi thriller Looper with Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt finished in fourth place this week. And finally, Tim Burton's new movie Frank and Weenie finished in fifth place. Now, one of the longest lasting couples in Hollywood has split. Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman separated after 30 years of marriage. The couple met in an off-Broadway production in New York in 1970. Danny DeVito happened to be an actor in the production that Perlman came to, and then the two quickly hit it off. They moved in with each other two weeks after meeting each other and then lived together for about 12 years before getting married in 1982. There have been no statements yet that have been explaining the separation that have been released. Now, a comedian and a Fox News anchor have participated in a mock debate at George Washington University. John Stewart and Bill O'Reilly debated their polar opposite views during an event called the Rumble in the air-conditioned auditorium. The 90-minute exchange at the university marked the first head-to-head -head debate between the celebrities. Stewart and O'Reilly have a long history of political feuds dating back to more than a decade. Organizers say that about 1,500 people attended the event, but the main audience was intended to be online. Back to you guys. With gas prices reaching record-setting highs, Angelinos had to look for other ways to get around the city. The popular choice was the bicycle at Cicla Via. Valley News reporter Daniel Magadon has more in the story. The fifth Cicla Via was held on the streets of Los Angeles for cyclists, roller skaters, and even pedestrians. Over nine miles of city streets were closed, allowing cyclists to sightsee and enjoy the biggest block party. I love just the vibe, like people, friends, family, you know, food trucks, just L.A. It just makes you feel awesome because we're all doing this as a big group. I, I think the diversity, uh, the, the marketplace, it's just uh, tasting different kind of food. Ciclovia models after Ciclovias, which have been held for over 30 years in Bogota, Colombia. This event is intended to give a break to the city's car-dependent culture. From high bikes, to wacky bikes, to even, that's right, you guessed it, a dinner table bike. The event attracts over 100,000 cyclists to many landmarks along the route. Mariachi Plaza, City Hall, several bars and liquor stores. Uh, MacArthur Park, I think I did from Endan from MacArthur Park to Soto. Businesses were also open to riders, and one owner says Sick LaVia should help out with business. I think if the group, the business district works together, they can take advantage of it. The best LA food trucks took the advice of working together and were also at the event for riders who needed a quick snack along their journey. From Los Angeles, I'm Daniel Magallon, Valley View News. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Rigo Villalobos. And I'm Lauren Ari. We'll see you next week.